percentage of your life. Jenna Hello, what's going on everybody? This is Jenny Weaver. I'm going to give you a powerful word about how to break the spirit of fear off of your life. I was just doing a Facebook Live and I hope everybody will come back on. This is wild. Are you ready for this? I was just doing a Facebook Live five seconds ago and I went to say the enemy wants to keep you in the dark. He doesn't want you to to expose his schemes. And I was just about to say out of my mouth, that's why he fights Facebook lives like this. But as soon as I went to say, that's why the whole entire Facebook app just closed down. And I just saw a regular screen, my home screen. We're back. Everybody share the video because something is about to happen. Somebody is about to get free. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy, I decree and declare, and I call you out of that cave of fear. I command those demonic spirits that have you bound up, even to the point of suicide. I command those demons to loose their hold. Now I'm not playing. I'm not playing now. Somebody's life is at stake. Because there's nothing wrong with my phone, there's nothing wrong with my signal, there's nothing wrong with it. And all of a sudden the entire Facebook Live just shut down. And I went to say, that's why the enemy fights Facebook Lives. Before I could get that out of my mouth, God is my witness, the whole thing shut down. But look what we're doing. We are back. That's a prophetic. Come on, Julie Fox. That's what we do as Christians. The enemy pushes and we push even harder. So I'm talking to you about the spirit of fear and that it needs to be evicted out of your life. Elijah just posted the article, a prophetic word that I gave concerning fear. Everybody on here, listen, I'm asking you, um, your sister to you, share the video, click that little share button, click those three dots, share it with everybody you know, start a watch party, whatever you got to do, because something is on this line. That's going to help you. I'm telling you, the helper is here today. The helper is here today. Some of you are so afraid that you can't even admit that you need help in this area. That's what God's coming for tonight. That's what God's coming for. Come on, Crystal Pool. Come on, Katrina. Come on, Donna. That's what God is coming for tonight. The hidden fear. That's it, God. That's it, God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The devil loves to hide. The devil loves to stay in the dark shadows. The devil loves to make you think it's not the devil. I'm telling you what I know. If he knew that he was exposed, the very first thing he's going to do is make you think that you're crazy, that you're being extra, that you're being too holy, that you're just way out there, that you're just too religious. He's going to keep saying those things. I don't even use people around you to say that. But I'm telling you, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11, I wrote this in my book. It just came out today. Get it. Fear is a liar, a whole entire liar. It says to keep Satan from taking advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. How do you keep the devil from taking advantage of your life, Jennifer? How do you keep the devil from taking advantage of your life, Goldie? Joy, faith, this is how it says, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. I'm not ignorant of what he's doing. I'm not ignorant for when he tries to talk. I'm not ignorant for when he tries to whisper. I'm not ignorant for when he tries to get a foothold. I'm not ignorant for when he tries to bring an offense. I'm not ignorant for when he tries to bring unforgiveness. I'm not ignorant when all of a sudden I'm getting nervous about stuff I shouldn't be nervous about. I know it's him. And that's how he cannot take an advantage of my life or my family's life. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching, girl. Preach. If you're on here and you need this word, say, this word is for me, and then share it. I was just talking about this, and the whole Facebook Live just shut down. Now tell me the devil's not busy. But guess what? We're back. That means God is busy, too. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. 
So right now, I just pray over this Facebook Live. Father, I just pray that the mighty host of heaven will go forth and bring your word to pass. I pray, God, that you will send your ministering angels to go and to minister deliverance and salvation and freedom. For the Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. You don't have to be in that prison of fear anymore. You don't have to be in that prison in your mind anymore. You don't have to walk through this thing alone. You don't have to be worried that you're not a good Christian. I'm coming for that hidden fear in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm standing in the authority of Christ, the authority that he gave me, and I am coming for that fear that's been keeping God's people down. In the name of Jesus, you shall be free. Lazarus, come forth. Come forth. Come out of the grave clothes of fear. In Jesus' name. Payne said, this word is for me. Who else is this word for? Share it. The devil hates when he's exposed to the light of truth. He will work overtime to do these things. Are you ready? The devil will work overtime to plant in your mind and in your heart unsound doctrine, religious restricting mindsets, fear tactics. Come on, somebody. All of these things are rooted in fear so that he can keep people locked in a demonic chain and he can keep people who are prisoners in their own mind. I was a prisoner in my own mind. I was a prisoner because I always felt rejected. I had a spirit of fear that I was going to be rejected. And so everything that I did and how I operated and how I responded and how I experienced life came out of that root. I didn't connect with people because I was afraid they're going to do me dirty. So I'm going to leave them before they leave me. That's a spirit of fear at work. It's not, oh, look, I'm big and bad. I got to take care of me, myself and I. That's a spirit of fear. When you hear people saying that, I'm telling you, they're not big and bad. They're afraid. Come on, somebody. Who am I talking to on this live? God's exposing stuff. This live was just cut off, but now it's back. And God told me as soon as I started click and play and I went forth, I heard he's coming for the hidden fear. The hidden fear. You may not even realize that there's fear in your life because it's been hidden. The devil has been trying to convince you that it's just a part of life. Oh, no. Don't think it's fear. It's not the devil. Everything's not the devil. Yeah, you're right. Everything is not the devil. But the spirit of fear is the devil. Okay. Thank you, God. Again, all of this is rooted in fear so that the devil can keep people locked in demonic chains and prisoners of their own mind. When we look at that scripture, it says, one, the devil is trying to take advantage of us. One of the ways he does this is to get us to be ignorant of his schemes, tactics, plans, and strategies. He does not want you to know Joy. He does not want you to know MJ. He does not want you to know Rebecca that he is actually behind anxiety, that he's actually behind panic attacks, that he's actually behind doubt, rage, isolation, worry. Come on. You say, oh, I'm just a worrier. That you got to recognize that that is not a normal part of life for a believer. It is a normal part of life for the world and the kingdom of darkness. But we are not of this kingdom. We are of a heavenly kingdom. And the Bible says, for God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound and a sober mind. Come on, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be open this day. God, open the eyes of people. God, draw in who needs to be on this live, God. In the name of Jesus, I command their spirit to come into alignment with the word of God right now. In Jesus' name. Some of you are starting to feel like something's happening to you already. I'm telling you what I know. It's that spirit of fear that's going to come up and out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, God, for the deliverance that's on this live. Thank you for the deliverance anointing that is resting on this live. Even as I begin to read and even as I just begin to call out names and just talk to you and just pray over you and prophesy, people are being delivered in their homes, on their jobs, in their cars, wherever you're watching this. The power of God is here to deliver you today. You don't have to walk through this life in fear all the rest of your life. You don't have to walk through life in fear every single day. You don't have to be in fear when you go to the doctor. You don't have to get 25 people on a prayer line to pray with you because you're worried and you're fearful. You don't have to do that. You're going to have power, love, and a sound and sober mind. And you're going to walk in boldness and in victory every single day. You go, how do you know that? Because I'm walking in that every single day. Do I have the opportunity and am I faced with fear at times? Absolutely. I would be a bold-faced liar if I said no. I would be a liar if I said no. That's right, Brenda. That's the Holy Ghost moving on you. If a truck comes out of nowhere and I'm driving and I'm in the car with my child and it's screeching tires, I'm not going to be like, God's got this. That Come on. I'm living in a real life. This is real, real life right here. I'm going to be faced with the unpleasant emotion of fear. Now, I can either follow through and just walk the road of fear and go all the way with it, panic, freak out, forget the word, forget that I'm a child of God. I can forget all that and I can just, <laughs> or I can have that moment of, oh my gosh, Jesus. That's normally what I say. And then I can move in faith at that point. You have the choice. You are not a helpless person that has no choice in the decisions of your life. Come on, if you feel God, let me know because God is moving on this life. Once we become aware of the areas in our lives that the enemy has tried to bring fear, we can rightly then apply the truth to every situation where there is fear. And the truth is going to radically rip you out of that prison of fear. My Bible says, and you'll know the truth and the truth is going to set you free. If you don't have the truth, you cannot be set free. If you don't know Jesus, then you cannot be set free. Why? Because Jesus himself said, I am the truth. Here's the thing. There are hidden fears in people's lives. I'm talking to Christians here. I'm talking to Christians and believers. There are hidden fears. People are, believe it or not, you are sitting in church with people to the left and to the right that are dealing with daily worry, panic attacks. They're on medication to combat these symptoms that you see when the root is really fear. Emotional outbursts, mood disorders, mental issues going on fear is at work there i'm telling you what i know and we are living in a day and age where now the church doesn't not everybody but most of the church doesn't even recognize that it's a demon spirit anymore i don't know how we got so far from the truth but if somebody comes up to you in church and they say girl i'm just so worried about this and and then next week they come up and they say Oh, well, you know, that's really concerning me. I'm just, I'm just scared. I'm just worried. And listen, it's so normal now that the person listening is not even shocked. We should be absolutely in shock because we should go, wait, whoa, that's a spirit of fear. No, the devil is a liar. And not be condemning, but to help them and walk them through the word of God that says, wait a minute now, we have a truth that we can stand on. The devil is at work here. There's a deceiving spirit at work here. And I see it at work in your life. And we need to pray right now. I'm not going to say I'm going to pray for you later. No, right now. We need, to have, we need to have that kind of reaction when people come up to us and say, can you pray for me? I'm having panic attacks. Joy says, I've been delivered and healed from panic attacks, severe panic attacks. We need to have enough faith and enough zeal 
to go up to our sister in Christ that's been dealing with suicidal thoughts, that's been dealing with spirit of rejection, that's been dealing with panic over the doctor report, that's been concerned about her being kicked out and she's constantly worried and fearful and can't live a life of joy. We need to be so filled with the spirit and so delivered ourselves that we can go minister the gospel of truth to other people. That's what God is wanting us. He wants us at that point. We don't need to say, well, sis, I understand. I went through that too. And I had an aunt that died from that too. And it's a terrible thing. Stop. Just stop. Please. I'm begging you. We have got to learn how to overcome fear. We don't add to it. We remove it. Come on, somebody. Who am I talking to on this Facebook Live? Say, this is for me. If I'm talking to you, say, this is for me. And even with depression and even with a spirit of heaviness, a lot of times you will see another thing at work, and that is a spirit of fear. People get depressed because they feel rejected or they get depressed because they've gone through a traumatic experience that was very fearful. It was a very terrible thing. And that's what you're seeing. And so all of a sudden, that replay of the tape begins to happen. The memory recall is riddled and marked with fear, fear, fear. Scared to step out. Scared to connect. Scared this one's going to leave. Scared they don't accept you. Scared that you're not going to be loved right. Scared that this person's not going to respond to you. Scared that if you put yourself out there, they're going to reject you. All I hear is fear, 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 fear. And I'm calling it out in the name of Jesus. I'm calling it out of every believer. There are some leaders. There are some pastors. There are some prophets on here. There are some Sunday school teachers. There are some evangelists on here. And you are actually dealing with a spirit of fear. And that's why you're not seeing yourself walking in your full calling. You already know the vision that God gave you. You already know the dream that God placed in your heart. But what's happened along the way... Is fear has crept in. And God sent me on this Facebook Live tonight to tell you that there is freedom. And your freedom is in Jesus Christ. And your freedom is here now. Not a month from now. Now in Jesus' name. For whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Let me give you the scripture because this is going to, this is just going to take you to that next level. Are you ready? Are you ready? And I'm going to pray, April. I'm going to pray for all those needs. So thank you for writing that. I see your comment. And yes, I am going to pray in the name of Jesus. Yes, Jaina, I see your comment. And I'm going to pray. Christy says, this is for me. I'm going to pray. Jennifer, I see your your comment. I've been there. I've done that. And I'm going to pray for you. I feel the heaviness in the room. I feel it. I feel like Jesus who was um, felt the compassions. He felt the infirmities of the people. He was he was drawn with compassion. I feel that. I feel the Holy Ghost drawing me. In the name of Jesus, we're going to pray. Psalm 55, 22 says, Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. What does fear do? Fear torments. Fear shakes you up every single day. Fear makes people actually physically shake and tremble. And my Bible says, he will never let the righteous be shaken. Cast your cares on the Lord. He will sustain you. And this is why I brought this scripture up. You guys go, I already heard that scripture. But some of us are not even casting our care on the Lord. I'm talking about you can't get fear out if you don't even recognize that you have hidden fear working in your life. Come on, if you're dealing with that depression, if you're dealing with heaviness, if you're dealing with rejection, I want you to write what you're dealing with out on the comments. And if you've never done that or you just felt immediately pulled back, that's probably fear working in your life right there. And you need to go ahead and expose it. How can you cast a care that is hidden? How can you put something at Jesus' feet that you're unaware of? How can you come out If you want to stay hidden with it because you're afraid of what people are going to say. The only thing that people are going to say on this Facebook Live is we're praying for you and believing for you. And we've been there and we've done that. Come on. 
I know because I've walked through it. I know what it's like to be a minister and to be afraid to put a comment in. Because you don't want people to think you're weak. You don't want people to think that maybe they shouldn't uh, be under your ministry. You don't want people to think, oh, wow, that, that you don't have faith. That's not it. That's not it at all. There are good people that love the Lord, that are doing excellent things in ministry. They are powerful in the realm of the spirit. And there is hidden fear in their life. And God wants to expose every bit of it. If you sit on Facebook and you're concerned about how people see you, Every post you write, everything you do is always with not what God is saying, but how will the people perceive this? What did the people want? I'm quite sure that that is a a level of fear that is mixed all in there. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, God. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. I see your comment about your daughter, Sarah, and we are going to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Fear of sharing testimonies. Yes. Yes. Thank you for writing that. I remember when God delivered me and I began to tell my testimony and I told about five things that God delivered me from. I said, this is enough. He delivered me from the streets. He delivered me from jail. He delivered me from drugs. He delivered me from rage. He delivered me from anger. And then I didn't want to say he delivered me from homosexual lifestyle. I didn't want to say that. Why? Because all of a sudden fear hit my life. I didn't want to say that he delivered me from, uh, that I was set free from the court system, that I was a minister for several years on probation. I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to say that he delivered. I got hair on my mouth. I'm trying to get it out in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, it's bothering me. Thank you. Thank you, God. I didn't want to say that he delivered me from witchcraft. I didn't want to say that because I said to myself, if I say I was delivered from witchcraft, people are not going to know that. They're not going to, they're just not going to get that. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that you will be free to tell your testimony. Hold on one second. Okay. That is a real fear that people have. People want to sugarcoat stuff so much because we're afraid of what people in the seats are going to say. You know what they're going to say? The same thing that they say to me. Thank you for sharing. I'm so glad that you told that part because I've been dealing with that my whole life. And I didn't, I've never heard anybody share that part. But you shared. And now I know that there's freedom. When I shared about being rebellious towards my husband and God delivering me from that, wives all over the world begin to write me and say, Thank you for sharing that. Come on. When I shared about having so much unforgiveness and hatred towards my father for 17 years until God broke all that down in a moment's time when my father was on his deathbed and I shared that. I don't care how it makes me look. I care how God looks in my life. I care about making him look glorious. Come on, somebody. So we're breaking off fear. And I was reading all of this from my book. Fear is a liar. 21 days, I cover so many things. I cover worry, panic. I cover spirit of rejection. This was one of my favorite chapters right here. Spirit of rejection. And I actually have you do work. It says, let's get to work right here. Do you struggle with rejection? All these questions. There are challenging questions. I had a, 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 a few students do this. I made them do it again. And we went through it day by day. And they said it was one of the toughest things that they had to go through. A book. Why? Because the Lord downloaded this in me so that it can go and hit your spirit and stuff begin to rise up to the surface. I'm telling you, people that wrote and said they were on their floor getting deliverance. Is it me? No, absolutely not. It is not by might nor by power, but by God's spirit. But if we will be a vessel, he will flow through us. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus, if you need prayer, say, I need prayer. I want to pray for you. I'm going to read one more scripture, and then this is going to this is going to take you over that edge. I'm telling you, this is it. It's the word of God that transforms. Mark 4. Verse 39 and 14, this is the one that they wrote in uh, the Elijah's List article that they posted today. 
Jesus got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. And he turned to the disciples and he said, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no fear? Jesus confronted the root of fear head on. He first rebuked it in the natural. He didn't think about it. He didn't go, okay, what am I going to do here? No, because he was in constant communication with his father. He said, I only do what I see my father doing. And because he'd already gotten up early that day and had prayer, because he was already in communication with the Holy Spirit that descended on him like a dove and never left it, remained. He already knew what to do. God's already put the answer of what to do in you through the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus stood up, walked right past the disciples, went straight to that problem and said, be quiet, be still. Come on. And it said, and the waves calmed down and they were still. He didn't sit up there and toil with it all night long. He walked in authority. He walked in it. Come on, somebody. And then what did he do? He took time to minister to the people that he loved. He turned to them and confronted them with their own fear. He wasn't going to say, okay, I took care of the problem. No, I believe he wanted to get them thinking. And he asked them a very interesting question because he already knows all the answers. So why does he ask questions? I believe he asked questions to get us to think and to get us to come into the understanding of what he's trying to bring to us. He says, why are you so afraid? They had to answer that. Each individual person had to answer that. He's asking you that today. Why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid? And then he asked one more question. Do you still have no faith? He connected right then, right there. Faith and fear. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Now that's challenging for us as believers because everybody, every believer, every Christian in the whole world, even Christians that just say they're Christians, but they're really not. If you ask them, do you have faith? What are they going to say? Yes. Yes, I believe. I believe in Jesus. I believe. I know God's good. I know he can make a way. I know he brought me out. But in this situation right here, right now, right now, do you have the faith that it takes to move this mountain and to tell this fear mountain to get up and to be cast into the sea, never to return to your home, to your mind, to your spirit again? Faith. Faith, faith. Fear is a liar. The storm, Katrina, listen. I see your name all the time. God wants to speak to you tonight, sis. Veronica. The storm was a lie. It made the disciples on the boat think that they were going to die. That's why they panicked. Because the situation around them made them feel that they, their lives were threatened. That this was a very serious thing. And listen, when you're in that, it feels like a very serious thing. And a storm is a real serious thing. I'm in Florida, so we've gone through Irma, Charlie. We've gone through all of them. And they're no joke. But I am not running around to Walmart every two days, scared out of my mind, trying to buy up everything. I'm not. I'm not ignorant either. I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to do what's necessary. But I'm going to stand on the word of God and I'm going to be out in my yard and I'm going to say, the angels are here. Not one flower be moved in the name of Jesus Christ. If my dad, if my father was able to speak to wind and waves and that same power that raised Jesus Christ out from the grave is living in me, then I can speak to the mountain in the authority of Christ Jesus and I can say, you spirit of rejection that has had a hold on my life since I was five years old and that thing happened, I'm commanding you now, come up and out 
You have been exposed. You're not hiding anymore. You're not hiding in this house in the corners. You're not hiding outside my door. You're not hiding in my dreams. You're not hiding in my God, my visions. You're not hiding in my marriage. You're not hiding in my ministry. We command every hidden demon of fear to come up and out. I'm commanding you now to manifest, come up and out now. Now, people all over and even replay viewers are beginning to go through deliverance. Do not be afraid when deliverance hits your home. Do not be afraid. God is there with you. Otherwise, he wouldn't allow this to happen. I'm telling you, it's only by the spirit of God that you can be set free. Let me finish up because people are feeling deliverance hit them right now. If your kids are going through fear, you need to get them in the room. Bring in the blocks, bring in the toys, let them play in the corner. But I'm telling you, just the word going into their spirit is going to help them. At the end of the day, that storm was a bunch of noise from the enemy. And the disciples were afraid, even though God was right there next to them. How many of you are afraid? but you are walking with the Lord. That's like walking down the road with Jesus Christ and you're, uh, uh. That's what you can see in the spirit realm. That's what's happening. I command the spirit of fear that's trying to get somebody to take their own life to come up and out now. I'm commanding you to come up and out now. Manifest and leave now. Go back to the pits of hell where you came from. You and every demon that you brought with you. Go now. I know what I see. I know what I hear. And the light of Jesus Christ exposes you. I literally see demons screaming for their lives and running out of homes. Goldie, I command every demon that torments your mind, loose your hold now in Jesus' name. I command your mind to be sound. Let the mind of Christ be in you. In Jesus' name. Every shackle come off of your heart. Brooke Young, I command your spirit to come into alignment with the gospel of truth. Everything that is out of alignment, come back into alignment now. And every tormenting demon and every spirit of fear and every spirit of rejection come up and out now. I'm praying this over every single person. Just because I didn't call your name doesn't mean I'm not praying over you. I'm just, I can barely see these comments. They're lagging behind, but keep putting your comments. Keep praying. Keep praying in your heavenly language. Keep crying out to God. I'm telling you, some of you don't even know that you're about to go through deliverance. You're on here praying for other people and deliverance is about to hit you in about 20 seconds. That's why I need every prayer warrior on here to pray. And I command every witch, every uh, creeping spirit that is trying to creep on this video and trying to cast spells, I command you in the name of Jesus, be bound up and go back to hell where you belong. And if you are operating through a person, I'm commanding you to stop now in Jesus' name. You cannot go any further. I know what I see. I know what I see. God wants to set you free. Some of you have gone through terrible trauma. Some of you have gone through terrible abuse. Some of you have gone through things that you can't even talk about. Some of you have gone through car accidents and traumatic things of that nature. And the spirit of fear has tried to grip you. And I'm telling you, there is freedom in Jesus Christ. I know it because he's given it to me. I know it because he's given it to millions of people, millions of Christians. You don't have to live with this every night. You don't have to have night terrors. You don't have to have insomnia. You don't have to be trembling when you go to the doctor. You're even looking at symptoms. Here's the thing. You're looking at symptoms, real life symptoms. And you're going, but God, this is what I'm dealing with. This pain is excruciating. This symptom is real. 
This arguing with the spouse is real. My child in the hospital is real. I'm telling you, there is freedom from fear though. And it is found at the feet of Jesus Christ. It is found at the feet of Jesus Christ. God's love is literally pushing out fear from so many people. Receive the Father's love. I'm talking about Father God. Father God. Yes, Jesus, absolutely. But some of you need to know the love of Father. You need to know the love of Father God. He smiles at you. He loves you so much that he would have you on this live broadcast to set you free from that hidden, deep-rooted fear that's been in there so long that you feel like it's a part of your personality. It's almost grew into you, just like you would see roots and vines growing over something until it looks like it's a part. It is not a part. He's literally coming to cut that thing out with the sword of truth. Michelle says, that's me. So Father, I just pray over every single person. God, I feel your heart of love so deep for each and every person. I feel that you want to literally rip them out of that cave, God. And I thank you that you're doing it for people all across the world right now. I thank you that you're doing it in South Africa for that person watching. I thank you that you're doing it in Finland for that person watching. I thank you, God, that you're doing it in Central America for that person watching and all over the world. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that you are wrapping your loving arms around them. And as you wrap your loving arms around them and your presence fills them, fear is lifting and breaking off. Every bit of it, go now. Now, you can't stay. You cannot stay. You have been evicted by the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ, and you must obey. Come on, somebody begin to go through your house and tell fear, get out. You have the authority. Yes, you do have the authority. The devil has been lying to you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you've even said, you can't pray like that. You need someone to pray. The devil is a liar. Walk through your house right now. You've never done it before, but tonight's the night. Begin to walk through your home and begin to say, I command the spirit of fear to get out. Put your hand on your head, put your hand on your heart and say, I command the spirit of fear to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. God's raising up strong men and women of God. Come on. We do not allow the devil to keep wreaking havoc in our lives. It is a choice. At this point, once you come into the knowledge and you just heard, from this point on, it will now be a choice. It will now be a choice. Will you choose the road to freedom today? Walk through your house. Who's walking through their house? I want to pray with you as you have that phone on, you have that device on and you're walking through your house. Who is that? I want to be able to pray with you and I want to begin to speak over your house just like I walk through my house and every house that I've lived in since I've been saved, walking through regularly, decreeing and declaring the spirit of our God lives here and no devil in hell can stay, can come, or can dwell here, period. In the name of Jesus, who's walking through their home right now? I pray for everybody that was on here that earlier that said they were dealing with sickness. I saw someone say cancer. I saw someone say diabetes. I saw someone say um, uh, depression. I saw someone say suicide. In the name of Jesus, we pray over each and every one of those things and we know that God is the healer and he is the deliverer. And I speak and decree healing and deliverance to hitch your house tonight in Jesus' name. 
Receive it by faith. Receive it by faith right now. Receive it by faith right now. Somebody on here is actually going through a deep deliverance. You feel it happening to you. Let me help you walk through this. You stay on that floor wherever you are in the chair. I don't know what's, where you are. But you don't get up until the Holy Ghost is finished. You're going to cry through it. You're going to feel stuff. But I'm telling you, God is standing right beside you. And any time those demons are confronted with his glory and with the light of truth, they must flee. They have to go. You are okay. You are okay. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I went through it too. I was on the floor for quite a long time. I remember going through deliverance. And I thank God for it. It was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. In the natural, it was a very ugly looking thing. But it was beautiful in the realm of the spirit. Because Jesus came after me when no one else came after me. Because Jesus didn't let me die in my own sin. Because Jesus didn't let me continue on in a life of pride and, and drugs and alcohol and homosexuality and being a witch. Jesus came after me and he literally caused all those occult spirits and demons that I had been in covenant with to go from my life. And here I stand before you, set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. And if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. He'll do it for your daughter. He'll do it for your son. He'll do it for your grandchild. Thank you, Father, for more. More, I decree and declare the fire of God hitting homes all over America right now and all over the world and every nation. The fire of God from the top of your head into the soles of your feet. The fire of God. The purifying fire of God now to come and burn out anything that's not of him. God, do a complete work tonight. You thought you were on here and that you were going to just enjoy a nice little pep talk. And God stepped in to deliver you from that thing that has been holding you captive for so long. That's why I'm not ending the live. Because God's not done. Yes. I command every perversion, every bit of perversion that came in uh, when people were young children and that was coupled with the spirit of fear through that and that has held on to them for most of their life i command that spirit to go now in jesus name out of your thought life out of your emotions even out of your memory recall i command it to go now in jesus name loose your hold loose your hold Every bit of addiction is broken now in Jesus name. Even to prescription medication, it breaks now. It breaks now. I decree and declare the freedom of God in your life, the spirit of God over you right now. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Father, as they're walking through their house, I plead the blood over every door, over every window. God, if there's anything in this house, God, that they don't even know that they have open doors through television, entertainment, movies, uh, different people that are coming in different relationships, things that they have gotten into that they're unaware of, God. I pray, Lord, that you would begin to shine the light on those things, God, and give them wisdom to close these doors and to open them never again. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that you are causing every bit of darkness, every demon spirit to go right now from these homes of believers out of their dreams. In the name of Jesus, out of every bedroom. <coughs> off their property right now in Jesus name in Jesus name begin to walk through your house with that phone I command witchcraft go I command it to go now in Jesus name I command every deceiving lying spirit to go now go back to the pits of hell where you belong get out and take every demon that you brought with you I come in the name of the Lord. That's who I am. 
Yarama Shurama Mamanzi Karamandere Kedidia. Come on, somebody keep praying with me. Keep praying. God say, do it in me right now. Do it in me. I'm praying that myself. Never let that prayer go. Or you don't think that you've arrived and that you don't need to keep laying before the Lord and saying, God, search my heart. See if there be any wicked way within me and lead me in the path of righteousness. God, lead me in the in your in your path of everlasting truth. Shorabababakara. Some of you need to share this in somebody's inbox. A personal friend of yours that you know needs deliverance. Come on. So, Father, we just thank you. I just thank you, God. And I just feel led of the Lord to do this. I haven't done this in a while, but I'm going to do it. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. If you are on here, someone invited you, someone shared this in your inbox or you're watching a watch party or however you got here, maybe it just popped up and you don't know the Lord or you're not walking with God the way that you need to. Right now, I want you to say, God, I'm giving you my life. I need you with everything within me. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I'm going to choose this day to follow you. Tell him right now. You're not promised tomorrow. You don't do, don't wait till your boyfriend or girlfriend moves out and you start living. Do it now. Don't wait till you're not high anymore. Do it now. Do it right now. You might be sitting there and just put the needle in your arm. I'm telling you, give your life to Christ right now. You don't, you're not promised tomorrow. Some of you are saved but you're really truly not living for the Lord on fire for God. You're just going to church on Sundays and you really, you don't have no communication with God. You barely open your Bible. You're not walking in the things of God. That would mean that you're lukewarm. You need to come back. If I tell you anything else, I would be a liar and I'm not, I'm not going to hell for anybody and I don't want you to go to hell because you think that going and sitting on a pew on Sunday is going to get you in heaven. The Bible never says that. He says, if any man follow after me, deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. So say, God, I'm making, I'm giving you my word today. I'm following after you. I don't know what that looks like just yet, but God, I feel you moving in my life and I need to give you my life right now. Give your life to Christ right now. If you gave your life to Christ, say, I did. Type that in, say, I did. God's healing cancer right now. God's healing diabetes right now. Somebody with arthritis has been healed. Migraines are leaving right now in the name of Jesus. Chronic migraines are leaving. High blood pressure is being healed right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody's walking on crutches and God is healing. That pain is leaving in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. The swelling in somebody's ankles that's being healed right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God. Somebody's feeling heat on their ears. You have partial hearing. You don't have full hearing. You have partial hearing. You're feeling heat on your head, on your ears right now. God's healing your ears. You're going to be able to hear absolutely 100% clear in Jesus' mighty name. God's clearing out those... Um, things in your eyes, those floaters, those things that have been irritating and floating around in your eyes. God's healing you of that right now in the name of Jesus. There are five other people that need to give their life to Christ. And the reason why you didn't do it in the beginning is because you, you go to church. I'm telling you, you're lukewarm. You need to come back and be on fire for God. You need to come back and be on fire for God. Nothing to be ashamed of. God said, if you're ashamed of me on earth, I'll be ashamed of you in front of my father. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, come on. In the name of Jesus, I feel that so strong in my spirit that someone's swelling is going down in your legs right now. Test it, you'll see. Why? Because the miracle realm has just opened up. Because salvation is here. Deliverance is here. When God's here, he brings all of him. I received, you received salvation, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Someone had a sprained leg, sprained ankle. 
God's healing you of the pain of that in the name of Jesus. Look at all the people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. I see you. I celebrate with you, my brother, my sister. God sees you. Do you know what it takes to write that on Facebook? I commend you for doing that. I love you in the Lord for doing that. Saying that you're lukewarm, but you want to be back on fire. I love that heart that you have. God loves that you just did that. And I celebrate with you. And I pray that you will be more on fire than you've ever been in your whole life. Jesus, I thank you. Yes, you're getting your fire back, but it won't be the same fire that you had. It's going to be a greater level of it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody else said, thank you, Jesus. Yes, I heard specifically there were five more people that needed to say, I want to be back on fire for God. I, I'm not on fire. I'm not, I'm not on fire. That means you're not hot. I mean, if you're not cold, you are a believer, so that means you're not cold. And, but you're not hot, that means you're lukewarm. And the Bible says God will spit you out of his mouth. I don't want, I don't want him to do that. Come back to God right now. I'm telling you, everybody on this Facebook Live, I don't care if you're a minister. I don't care if you're on TV. Say, that's me. I need to come back. I need my fire back. I need my fire back. I want signs, miracles, and wonders to follow me like the Bible says. Signs, miracles, and wonders will follow them that believe. Basic. Come on. If you're not hearing from God on a regular basis or talking to God on a regular basis, communing with the Holy Ghost on a regular basis, if you're not having communication with the Lord and you do not know the Lord like a real, true, best friend, He doesn't speak with you and you don't really hear from Him, you're not hearing from him and he's not hearing from you you're lukewarm and you need to come back to God now I know a lot of people aren't going to like that but that's that's the honest to God truth and if I told you anything else I'd be a liar and I'm not lukewarm means you're not cold so you you have accepted God probably go to church but you're not hot what is hot that means you're walking in the things that God's called you to do. You're obedient. You serve him with all your heart, your mind, your soul. You love the Lord. And because you love him, you worship him. You spend time in your word. You get up early. You pray. I'm, let me stop. say get up early. You make sure that you spend time with God. You don't pretend that he's just a, a weekend visit. Like a stepchild that just comes in and out every now and then. No, no, no. You wouldn't dare do that to God because you're so passionately on fire for God. You wouldn't dare just drive in your car for a whole hour by yourself and not speak to the Holy Ghost that's sitting right next to you. You wouldn't dare do that. No, no, no. Because you're on fire. You move in the, in the, the gifts of the Spirit. Why? Because you're on fire. You're hot. You're not afraid to go up and pray and evangelize. Why? Because you care more about what Jesus thinks than what other people are going to say about you. You care more about what Jesus thinks than thinking, oh, I don't want them to, to be offended. You care more about Jesus being offended than you care about people being offended. You got to be hot in this season. God is spitting out lukewarm. That means it's, I don't know how to say it any other way than this, it's disgusting to him. It's disgusting to him. Because to me, he looks at his sacrifice and he goes, I gave all of that. And I've made, I've prepared this whole table. And you won't even come and eat of this? You won't even come partake of this? He says, I'd rather you be just cold. Now that is a statement like I've never heard in the word of God. That is a statement. God says, I'd rather you be cold. Fathom that. He would rather you not know him than for you to be lukewarm. Stephen, are you hearing this? Because this is blowing my mind. And, and God is speaking to somebody on here. You're going to go to bed tonight revived and refreshed and renewed and your fire is going to come back. Come on. That's why I'm not getting off this live. You're going to go to bed tonight or whenever you're watching this, you're up today, this morning. And now you're stepping into 
the fullness of God. The fullness of God. And fire is hitting you right now. You have a passion for Jesus again. Like when you first got saved. And you couldn't stop reading the Bible. And you literally carried a Bible everywhere you went. Because you love you some Jesus. Then life crept in. And things happened. And slowly but surely you stepped away from that fire. But tonight is a night for restoration. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you so much, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to this. I just want you. Shura mama 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 I just want you. Nothing else, God. If you're newly saved, say that. Nothing else will do. I just want you. That's right, Melissa. Fall fresh. Come on. That's right, Jojo Jones. More glory, more fire. That's right, Heidi. Come on. Step into fullness. Come on. That's right, Christy. The Holy Ghost was going through your house. Come on. We'll do what I just want you. Jesus, we thank you for each and every person. Look at all the comments. Look at all the comments, guys. Read the comments. Look what the people are saying. That's God. That's Jesus. But I just want you. And nothing else. Nothing else. I gotta go. What were we doing? Get the book. Fear is a liar. Get five copies. Give them to everybody in your neighborhood. In fact, get 20 copies. And you said, Stephen, are you listening? My husband, Stephen, just said yes. <laughs> Our husbands got good names, don't they? That's the best name in the world right there, Stephen. I love that name. Besides Jesus, of course. All right, I gotta go. I love you. I'm gonna be back on tomorrow. I think I'm gonna be back on um, at 11 o'clock in the morning, 11.30, sorry, 11.30. So please join me. Share this with somebody. You guys are so amazing, so encouraging, so um, supportive. And I just thank you. I thank you. You know, I, I wrote that book. I self-published it. It was part of my curriculum. And I said to, to Stacy last year, I don't know when it was, Stacy, when we talked, I said, Stacy, I want to start printing out the curriculum and put it in books. He said, I want you to work on fear as a liar. And I kind of forgot about it. And she wrote me one day and she said, pretty fin I'm pretty much finished with fear as a liar. I'm like, oh, yeah, we are having that come out. And I, went, I looked through it and I was like, you know what, this right here. It was so powerful when our students went through that. They got so much breakthrough, and I said, man, I cannot wait for this book to hit. Because what we saw happen in, the, in our academy with the students, people are going to receive all over the world. And I just got so thrilled. And then you know what I did? I wrote the forward, I'm sorry, the dedication. Let me see this. The book is dedicated. To my students. Oh, it's not turned around anymore. I dedicated the book to my students. And I said, because your love and support has been a blessing to me. I saw the need for this topic because you came to me with your honest prayer request. God birthed this through me just for you. Now may many others receive the freedom so many of you received from reading this. So I love you, my students. And by the way, I did open up my 
core group. I want you to be a part of my core group. I'm about to go live in 30 minutes in my core group. And we're going to go even deeper than this. If you go, well, how can you go deeper than this? We do. Ask them. And um, I'm going to give them the prophetic word of the Lord for today. And then we're going to do our nightly decrees. And I'm going to get to know them. Join my core group. Uh, if you've just joined, you'll be able to uh, get into the group. Uh, when are we doing that? Uh, right before March 1st. So we're going to allow everybody to come into the group. And we're going to welcome you with a big to-do and a big celebration. So join my core group. Go sign up for it right now. It's going to be amazing. You get e-course every month. You get an e-book every month. You get the nighttime group chats. You get the prayer wall, the worship wall, the team staff, the student aides, myself. You're going to be mentored. And yeah, hold on. Mary said, yes, we do. She's right. Tell them. Tell them, Ruthie. Tell them how we get down. Tell them, Rebecca. Rebecca, what are you doing up so late? <laughs> She's in a whole another place. She's over there in Finland. Hallelujah. So I'm so glad that you're up. Now you can be a part of the core group chat. I love you guys, and we are a core family. So join my core. That's right, Goldie's in the core. Adriana is my admin in the core. Stacy's one of my admins in the core. Johanna, Brandy's on here. She's one of my students. Um, just basically everybody. I just love you all. I gotta go. I gotta prepare for tonight's core group chat. See ya.